Hello again guys, uh, I had to stop the video last time because uh, you know everything was going crazy here, people knocking the doors, texting me, whatsapping me, the, the phone was ringing and, and I do everything live so I don't edit the videos. I'm gonna continue now uh, the problem the, with the second part and the second part is gonna be uh, the shear moment diagram for this uh, type of beam where you have two loads, one on top and one on the bottom, because one student asked me to do that, and this is the problem that I'm going to solve, but this time I'm going to do it by using the method of the integral, so let's see how it works. In the, video, in the previous video, we calculated the reactions for this problem, which I really don't know, I really don't need, I'm sorry, the, the values. But with the summation of moments at this point, summation of forces in X and Y, and then we calculated the moment at B, and the moment at B was 75 kip per foot. And the reaction here, at this point is B, the reaction here was zero. So BY was zero, and MB was 75 kip per foot. Those values we obtained from the previous uh, video. Please go and watch the previous video. Now, if we're going to use the method of the integrals for this problem, the problem is easy also. The only thing that we have to do is combine the equations from the top and the bottom. And remember something, remember the basic definition here is the integral of the load plus the boundary condition as well as moment, then is the integral of the shear plus another boundary condition for moment. And this value, remember, is the value for shear read at the beginning of the diagram for the span that we are dealing with. Our goal is to find the equation of that load and find the equation of this load. What do we have to do? Well, my suggestion to you, whenever you have this type of situation, we explained it in the, in the previous video, but I'm going to use the same paper that I use. If this is the top load and this is the bottom load, I can just get the equation equation of this and combine it with the equation of this if I want to. But it's kind of easier, instead of doing that, adding point to point. I get the point of this triangle at the beginning, which is zero, and this value from the load that goes from bottom to top, the rectangular one, is positive two, and the one here is four, but it's negative because it's going downward, and this one is positive because it's going up at the end you're going to have a negative 2 value here for this load. Now you don't want to do it like that, you want to combine the equations, fine, let's combine the equations then. In order to combine the equations, first we have to create the equations. What is the equation for this load, triangular load? This is the equation of a line that goes like that. Equation of a line that goes like that is supposed to be y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. The y-intercept here is zero. What is the slope? The slope is rise over run, meaning 4 over 15. So the equation is going to be w, not y, but w equals m 4 over 15 x plus b, and b is zero. Now remember, one thing is the equation of the line, but the other thing is the arrows. The arrows are coming down, and that means that it's a negative sign here. So the load is going to be negative 4, 15x. That's the equation of the triangular load. And you can prove it. For x equals 0, where is the value here? The value here is going to be 0. And for equal equals 15, this is going to be negative 4. Well, yes, this is 4, but it's negative because it's going down. So it works. Now for the rectangular load, this is for the triangular load, remember, for this load. Now for the rectangular load, it's just the equation of this line. What is that line? That line is 2, so W equals 2. Then I combine this positive, because this is positive, with this, and the total load will be negative 4 over 15x, this one, plus this one. That's the total load. Now, if I had to use the method of the integrals for solving this problem, here's my paper here. If I have to use the method of the integrals for solving that, I have to say that shear is the integral of 
the load, and the load is negative 415x plus 2 dx plus the value at the beginning of the shear diagram. Okay, where is the shear diagram? Let's go back to this page. Shear diagram. If I'm going to do this, I'm going to put this in here. And remember, we already defined the discontinuity zones, which is only one from here to here. Here is for showing the shear diagram. Here is for showing the moment diagram. Remember, this is going to be in keep, and this is going to be in keep fit. And this is going to represent my zero, my baseline. And you start from this end, and you say, do I have any concentrated uh, shear force at that point or any reaction at that point. No, this is a cantilever and I don't have any concentrated force there. That means that my shear starts from zero. Now, this value, I read it from the diagram here, so this value is zero for this case. What is the value for the shear? Shear is equal to negative 4x squared divided by 15 times 230 plus 2x. That's the value for the shear. That's the equation of the shear. Now, if you compare this equation with the equation that we got before from the previous example, is this. Negative 4 over 30. Well, if I simplify this and I divide this by 4, I have 1 here and I have 7.5 here. So it's the same equation. I can simplify that negative x squared divided by 7.5 just to leave it exactly like the other one that I solved before. And then we, you evaluate this for x equals 0, v of 0 is this is 0, this is 0, 0, and v of 15. Why 15? Because 15 is the length of the span, 15 from here to there. So v of 15 is negative 15 squared divided by 7.5 times 2 times x, and x is 15. And then v of 15 is going to be, this is 15 squared, I know it's 0, but just to be sure, 15 squared divided by 7.5, 0. This is, be careful with this, this is not a point, this is 15, okay? So at 15 is 0. Now what is this equation? Where is my equation? The equation that we calculated, this one, is a parabola. How is the parabola? Well, the parabola is a frowny face. Yeah, but not only a frowny face, because now comes into play again what I told you, this part here. When you find this, or you can plot this equation, just to be sure, the equation of the load, you can plot the equation of the total load, just to be sure, and you say, oh, let me plot this equation of the load. What is the equation of the load? The equation that I calculated for the load in this problem was what is my equation for the load equation this one I said one plus the other yes the equation of the triangle was negative 4 over 15 X and the equation from the rectangle it was 2 that was the equation for the load if you plot this equation and you can say for X equals 0 you get 2 and for X equal 15 well if this is 15 then you get negative 4 divided by 15 plus 15 times 15, that's negative 2. So you can plot this equation and you get this. Why do I want to plot that? Because I need this point. I need to know how the load changes from positive to negative and if it has any zero crossing. Because the zero crossings are going to tell me in the load that the shear is going to be maximum. If I know what is my equation of the load that is like that, the only thing that I have left is coming to the original beam, which is this one, and then I go and I say, oh, I have to go from zero to zero, but my load is this way. From here to here, my type of load is positive because it's going up and it's decreasing because the height of the load is decreasing. Positive decreasing is like that. That means that it's going to go like that until the center. And then the next part is going to be negative and it's the height is increasing, so negative increasing is like that. So it's going to be like that. Distance from here to here, 7.5 feet. I want to know how much is that value, no problem. Then you put that into your equation for the shear. For 
7.5 which is the center because remember that's going to be the maximum shear then this is going to be negative 7.5 squared divided by 7.5 plus 2 times 7.5 so at 7.5 my shear is going to be this and this cancel out negative 7.5 plus 15 equals 7.5 keep that means that that's the value at the center 7.5 keep and this value here then it will be 7.5 keep and that's it for the shear diagram remember I always say joking but seriously whenever you reach zeros here you say yes because that means that you are going good that doesn't mean that the problem is correct but it means that you are going good now if you didn't close in zero by any chance here or your reaction doesn't make it close in zero you have a problem Houston go back and review what whatever you did now for the moment we go back to our definition and we say moment is the integral of shear plus a constant, not the constant, the boundary condition. Shear is this one. That's the integration that I'm going to do. So moment is the integral of this negative sx, x squared divided by 7.5 plus 2x dx plus c. Now what is that c? c is the value of the moment at the beginning of the span that I'm considering read right from the diagram. Okay, let's start that point here. Do you have any concentrated moment there, any fixed support? No, that means that that should start in zero. That means that this value for c here for the moment is zero. So now I solve my equation. Moment is negative x to the third divided 3 times 7.5 22.5 plus 2x squared divided by 2 is x squared and that's the equation for the moment which should be the equation for the moment that we got before here this is the equation of the moment that we got for the method of the sections this is the equation of the moment for the method of the integral same equation and now we say okay for m of zero how much is this? m of 0, this is 0, 0, 0, and for m of 15, then you say negative 15 to the third divided by 22.5 plus 15 squared, and m for 15 equals 75 give feet. Now, I know that my moment is going to start in 0 and it's going to end here in 75. Now, how does these two points go? Well, I know that at this point there is a change because the shape of this uh, shear is changing also. So what do I do? I study this shape. How is this shape? It's positive because it's plotted above the zero and it's increasing because the height of the curve is increasing. Positive increasing should be like that positive increasing should be like that and then I reach this point I want to know how much is that point no problem I substituted my equation for uh, the equation for moment that I got uh, at 7.5 and it should give me that value and we did that in the in the sections method of the section now I go to this other side what is this positive positive what decreasing because the height is decreasing positive decreasing, positive decreasing is going to be like that. That means that from this point to here is going to be positive decreasing like that. Once I reach this point I go to the point and I say do I have any concentrated load, do, 